All right, welcome everybody. This is our Ruax Spoon Challenge number 24, show and tell. Our template uh, very generously provided this time by Ryan Fireside Sloyd on Instagram. And uh, it's uh, a wonderful template. I'm really excited. We've got a lot of amazing spoons that have been posted up to the hashtag. Uh, so we'll take a look through those after we go through everybody's show and tell. So uh, with that, Ryan, I'm going to find you again. There you are in the grid. Uh, I'm going to spotlight you and we're going to let you tell us a little bit about how you uh, arrived at this form for your spoon. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, I don't know. Arriving at the form of the spoon. So I use templates like this where I do different bowls and handles and stuff like that. And this is just one that I kind of stumbled across that I like the combination of a while ago. I don't know. So I can't really claim any sort of real ownership. It's a old traditional Swedish proportions. Just, I don't know. I like the, uh, I like the big bowl, short mm -hmm. handle. I don't know. I just, I like it. It fits in my, I don't know, fits in my fat hands, all that kind of stuff. I, I dig it. So this is, just kind of that, settled that, in that's far too simple a story ryan you need to like come up with a better backstory like i i, I traveled know. to deepest darkest sweden through forests over mountains found a cave where there were trolls <clears throat> that were dwelling and i had to fight them to get them to give up the golden template <laughs> something like that i don't know <laughs> i know i wish in all my travels to japan i had come up with something fun that i could have named story <laughs> or something like that but i, I didn't and Oh, wow. Instead, I just printed a couple, a bunch of different things, you know, bowl <laughs> sizes, handle sizes, all that, and played around a long while until, I don't know, I like this one. And cool. then within it, there's uh, some different variations, you know, like this is one of the ones that I did for this current thing, which kind of shows some of the more, I don't know, styles that I'm into now, like just the, the hard transitions here at the neck, kind of mm -hmm. this thing. On these particular ones, these two, um, I don't usually have like the bold, like three facets on the back, but I'm pretty mm. enjoying it. These are only the uh, the third that I've done these, second and third that I've done this way. Previous, you know, I would have just done. Rounded it, yeah. Yeah, like a smooth bowl like this. And this one's still in the same, no finial on this one. Yeah. I yeah, like the look of the faceted. Josh Reed, right? I, I, I really the like the look of the faceted ones, but I'm wondering how oh, yeah. what's what's the mouth feel like on it compared to the the rounded and smoothed over ones. I don't think you feel any difference at all because in this in, okay. in the section where your mouth is is really touching it, mm -hmm. you know, it's so wide that really yeah. your mouth isn't over here in any ways. Like it gets pretty thin. Cool. I don't know. I feel a little bit weird putting this in my mouth right now since I've sold them. So <laughs> no <I'm> worries. <laughs> I'll use this one. But I don't think it would have uh, any impact. I would ask Oren because he's got one with the back facets, but I know he's never used it, so it's not going to do me any good to ask him. Um, it's not. I put it in my mouth. <laughs> But yeah, I don't know. That's all. And then lately, I don't know. I've been really enjoying kind of this geometric, like reverse diamond shaped finial. It's uh, easier for me to carve than a round one. That's, that's <laughs> and I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. Yeah, it's really snazzy looking. I like it a lot. So, yeah, I don't know. That's about all I can say about this template. Awesome. I, just, I really enjoy the proportion. So, and it's been all right. great watching everybody's cool versions of it. They're really awesome, guys. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for giving us the template and uh, really um, a, a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun carving this form. So with that, I'm going to take the spotlight off of you and go back to my grid so I can find Suze. And Suze, you're up. Hi. <laughs> hey. So as a birthday present, I bought, brought you Sloyd that. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> He's Hello. Actually carving. Welcome. He's actually carving. Look. Nice. <laughs> okay. So this is um, first that I made, and I stuck to the template for once, and that was yeah, was really cool. Very nice. 
Oh, actually, what was that made I, out of? I was, um, it's lime, basswood. Um, actually, I was confused about how the transition up here goes. So I went on Instagram and checked the hashtag. And I think the, uh, the one from Sunny was the first that came up. So mine looks a bit like Sunny's because I copied his. <laughs> nice. Sorry, didn't mean to steal, <laughs> steal your thunder, Sunny. <laughs> so it has a little gold finial. Very nice. It's okay. And then it looks the second really one, good too. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. The second one is from Chestnut, and I put this in uh, soda, water with soda. Mm. Um, so Kaylin gave me the, the tip, and it was like almost white at the beginning, and now it is this wonderful dark brown. I like it a lot. That really changed it. So it's a bit loosely, lo more loosely based on the template, I guess. No finial, but some some wobbly facets. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Yeah. That's it for me. <laughs> Excellent. Fantastic. Great job. That chestnut really gets a nice color with that uh, treatment. Right? It looks really nice. Crazy. Beautiful. How is chestnut to carve? I don't think I've ever like seen or, or gotten a hold of chestnut. Very nice. Um, I had it very fresh, like fresh off the tree, and it carves really nice. Okay, but it's so awesome. <laughs> hey, Alan, can I ask you to mute yourself? Nope. <laughs> All right. All right. With that, then, thank you, Suze. Wonderful job. Excellent. Let's go next. We said Sunny, I think, was going to be up next. So, Sunny, let me spotlight you. So All right. So I'm lucky enough to actually have one of Ryan's spoons and it is the smooth back kind. So when I, I got this about six months ago and I liked it so much that I immediately made a copy of it. And so this one is in Walnut and it follows along Ryan's lines as close as I could um, just out of the gate. And so I was happy when I saw the, the template come out. So I decided to make a whole handful of other ones. Oh my goodness. And at this point, I've made six of the, the templates, including the walnut one. Some of them, or two of them are made out of this very nice cherry that has tight grain and wow. kind of gets a lot of, you know, a lot of growth rings. Yeah. Um, Love the double bullseye. That's cool. Yeah. So these two are from the same log. This one actually has a, a deep hollow in the back. Nice. So only the first one really kind of follows very closely with Ryan's spoon. The rest yeah. of them are kind of an interpretation and yeah. have, you know, different facets, different amount of keel to them. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I think the, the hard, hardest thing for me is really this pinched neck and getting this transition nice and clean. Yeah. It takes a lot of time and care to get it clean and not just have a, a rounded transition there. Um, one of the things I think is very interesting we were talking about last night when we were on is this spoon, which is made out of um, hackberry and this spoon, which is cherry. If you lay them on the table, the tips of the, of the spoons are exactly the same amount of crank, but the crank is in a different spot. This one, you can see the bowl is curved. So the crank is kind of in the middle mm. where this one, the bowl is flat. So all the crank is in the handle. And this was something that we were talking about as far as, you know, understanding the design of the spoon and where you're, where you're putting the, the, um, the curve and how that's actually affects the, you know, the angle that you're using it at and kind of the overall look. So which one, <clears throat> which do you prefer in the bowl or uh, in the, in the back? I'm looking at mine and I think I do it in the bowl. Yeah. You're, the one that I have of yours is, is primarily in the bowl. Um, and I think that that actually makes for a more kind of beautiful spoon because it actually has the, the bowl has a more of a rounded edge to it or, a, you know, compound edge where this one is just flat. And I think this one would actually hold more liquid for the same amount of depth because it has a little bit of extra area back here. Um, you know, the ones that I typically use the, of mine um, have a much flatter bowl and the, the curve is in the bowl like this. So it's, you know, kind of has more of a, 
a flat crank in the bowl area instead of a flat, you know, flat is like this. This this just kind of turned out that way accidentally, but I thought it was interesting because they are exactly the same amount of bend, but there's the bends in a different spot. Yeah, so, that is super interesting. So I'll, maybe I'll post a picture just comparing the two and um, it was fun to carve. Thanks a lot, Ryan, I appreciate it. Awesome, fantastic spoon, Sonny, thanks. Thanks. All right, let's go back and Kamal, I believe we said you were gonna go next if I can find you. Where are you? Wave. I'm right here. There we are, thank you. Yeah. Spotlight you. So I only All right. One. I only have six with me. Um, I also was lucky enough to have one of Ryan's spoons for a while and I made a bunch of them. Um, so here's the first one that I have still. This is a maple. Nice. And this is uh, baked birch. Very nice. And then some cherry. <laughs> I'll take that. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it's okay. The adorable children are stealing the show, Kamal. Yeah, and right. <laughs> then these are very that I kind of went off the template. Then we get one. Yeah. So we have. I was playing with different shaped bowls. Very nice. That was very, can you go back to that? One of the, I think it was the second one you showed. It's got almost like this really interesting notch in the, okay. yeah. Yeah, there was a crack um, on this side, I think. Aha. Uh -huh. So I, instead of scrapping, I just made it a little. That's very interesting looking. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Excellent job, Kamal. Thank you. Oh, and Chuck, the tree's coming down today. So whenever you're ready. Oh, it's coming down today? Yeah, up in about an hour. All right, well, I'm up in New Hampshire, so uh, maybe I can swing it. Do you need help this week at all? Um, it'll go slow, so whenever you want to come down and get some maple. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, see everyone. All Thank right, you. thanks, Kamal. Cheers. All right, let me slip back to our gallery view, and who would like to go next? Wave a hand, make a motion. Let me know that you want to go. Hello. All right, Jurgen, you're up. All right, I'm muted. Okay. Yeah, so I did ended up doing three and almost four. Um, so the first one I did was this one here. Um, and as you can see the crank's a little odd but i i put this little finger notch in it yeah and just uh made it a little different there that was the first one i did nice what kind of wood is that that's a cherry it is cherry okay cool yeah so that one's that was the first one and i kind of realized i didn't get the crank and all of that mm -hmm. i wasn't happy with that one so but it's still nice i still like it it's nice um and then I think I got it a little bit better on this one. The, nice. The, you know, the overall yep. swoop on it was, I was happier with that one and thickness in that one. That's my walnut one. Very nice. Um, so I, that one, that one came out a little bit better. Uh, I was happier with that one. And then, then the third one um, I did can see that one's got a little bit more swoop and crank to it yeah and um wow pretty wood the handle especially that's really gorgeous yeah it came out nice i and yeah i, I like i said it, it, they're all they all got slightly different crank i don't have ryan's here you know i'm just trying to look at the the template, template. Yeah. The, you know the the curve on it um mm -hmm. you see that's why I usually mess up on on these templates is to get in the, you know the the, the side profile looking side right. profile exactly. So I I I was trying to work at that a little bit more, 
um, through it, but it still ends up a nice, comfortable one. And then, uh, yeah, this one's not done, but different wood that's coming through. That's where I've gotten so far on on this one. Nice. My fourth one, so it's it's work in progress. But Excellent. yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it. It's it, yeah, every time you're working with a piece of wood and you start going, I yeah, I just they all they all come out with different. That's where I'm gonna keep working it, but yeah. it was I, I enjoyed it. They, they're all comfortable and they're all, um, I like them all, but they're probably not all as nice as Ryan's, but it's the way it goes. Excellent, I don't know, they look, they look pretty good to me. So good they job. They look really good to me, man. They look yeah. really good to me. Great job. And it's fun playing with, with different side profiles. Like, like, I, I, like the ones, especially where it's like almost like one continuous curve, like through the whole thing, always looks kind of interesting to me, as opposed to where you've got a fairly obvious, you know, thing. So, so then trying to turn that into, like, like you've got some that the like that last one I think it was that that's almost like a continuous, like yeah, rounded curve, and then you've got, then there's times where you get a sharper delineation. Uh, well, that was uh, that's the two extremes, right? So the flat versus a, a curve. But I'm just talking in general, not you specifically. Um, then you'll have other spoons where it's it's more of like a sharp angle um, look, and then there's others where it's it's like the long straight handle, a shorter straight here, but it's it's a nice curve, almost like a like a swoosh, you know. Uh, anyway, part, I, I can't articulate it. Still too early. I stayed up too late last night. Drink more tea, Chuck. But uh, it's just, it's interesting playing around with all of those different looks, um, you know, and, and to see how it affects the feel and the use of the spoon. So it's cool stuff. Nice job. All right. Let me go back out to the gallery. And somebody wave a hand. Who wants to go next? All right, John. Mr. Couples, let me spotlight you. Hey, John. How are you doing, Chuck? Good. Get some chips off. Right. <clears throat> These were quite nice wee spoons to do. They're, the cherry I had wasn't quite thick enough to get a big crank in them, so they end up quite flat. Yeah. Uh, but and I didn't look at the Instagram to find the this transition, so it's a, a sort of swoopy, scoopy one rather than a sharp transition. This is, but it still works quite nice. Yeah. Um, it's the same piece of a uh, bit, and that's the cherry again. And you can't actually see it's too bright in here today, which is a bit strange. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that has got the bullseye in the middle. If you can, can actually. Yeah, see very it. nice. Uh, and that's the same, it's slightly sort of crankier and things, but no, I quite like them, so they're very nice and light and say, ideal will fit in your pocket and do what they say. So, Excellent. But yeah, they're, they aren't oil jet, they're just uh, been burnished and knife finished, so I'll try and all them later on this afternoon and have them done. Awesome, well done. Yeah, it's far too bright there. Surely you've relocated to the Mediterranean somewhere. <laughs> it was thunderstorms this morning, but no, the sun's come out, which is a bit strange, but never mind. <laughs> this, this weird glowing object in the sky. What is it? <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, well done, John. Thanks. All right. Drop back out to the gallery. And who would like to go next? Show a hand. Wave a hand. Help me find you. All right, Aaron. Awesome. Uh, hello. So um, I had time to finish one here in uh, Walnut. Um, my lighting looks not so good here. I have my two-year-old uh, painted fingernail still going. So nice. Uh, <laughs> not bruising. Um, Yes, yeah, so I have um, one of Ryan's too, but I didn't have it until I was like 80% done um, with this one. So um, I probably didn't get the kind of crank that I wanted quite with the piece of wood I had, but um, it came out all right. Um, I had never worked off a template before. Um, so that was fun to try to do 
something like that. Um, and yeah, is is a good shape. I tried to kind of push it really thin. Um, I think I like Ryan's. It's you know kind of nice and chunky in the handle. Um, and yeah, I guess went with a little something different on the finial. Nice. My daughter said it looks like a crown. Not exactly what I was thinking, but um, we'll go with that. Um, yeah, is fun and good. To I see, see a crown too. I guess I have the mind of a two year old. That's yep. right. Me too. <laughs> Looks like a crown to me. Lots of princess movies. There we go. What kind of wood was that? Uh, it's walnut. And then it, it is has, walnut. has this little streak yep. of vaulting and the sapwood. Um, and then very some, nice. You know, some sort of greenish blue. Yeah. Back there. Um, yep. Very nice. That's Excellent. Really well done, Aaron. All right. Let me uh, drop out the spotlight real quick and go back to the gallery. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Harry. Let me uh, spotlight uh, you real quick. All right, so I, I only uh, managed to do one, but so I've done it here in uh, this is Spalted Beach, I think it is. I wasn't sure when I started, but I, I think it's beach now. Um, really lovely to carve um although slow going so i've just tried to stick to the template as much as i can excellent and it's not got a not got a huge crank in it more of a more of a swoop i guess yeah. um but i i i really like how it how it feels in the hand and you know the fact that i'd not considered doing such a, a short handle for a for, you know a, a nice sized uh bowl like this but but yeah if it, it's uh this has turned into a, a sort of like a breakfast spoon yep. for, uh, for things like, like porridge and stuff. So uh, it's, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed carving it. And um, it's also my first time working from a template. So it was, it was nice to be uh, knowing where I was going as opposed to just seeing what happened. Awesome. That's really pretty wood. Like that. I love Spalted Beach. It's always yeah, so cool it's, looking. It is. It is lovely. Uh, lovely patterns on it. And, and the grain is, you know, it's, the grain's quite nice. Really nice. Is this oh, the first yeah. time you're joining us for a for Rise Up and Carve Show and Tell, or am I just got a bad memory? It's the first time for first time for the show and tell. Um, I've okay. Been to a, I've been I've been to the meeting a couple of times um, just to carve, but I've, awesome. Uh, I've not been for a show and tell before, so awesome. Yeah. Well, welcome, and uh, glad glad you're here with us. Awesome. Nice to be here. Cool. All right. Let me uh, drop back out real quick. Uh, where oops, I should have asked, where are you located? I am uh, in the UK, in Hertfordshire. Awesome. Excellent. Well, welcome once again. All Thank right. You. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Dominic. And then Simon, did, was, did, were you raising a hand? Okay, so we'll do Dominic and then Simon. You spotlight you, Poggy? Yeah, it's fine. So... Um... Those ones are made in, in black form. Nice. Um, to be honest, yeah, that one was um, the first one. And um, I'm very lucky that I have uh, one spoon of urine that made it a bit easier for me. And um, especially to see the transition there. Mm. And um, yeah, because there is a... Um, a knot. Can you see the knot? Yep. I couldn't make um, the handle as thin as I, I wanted to, but um, feels good. And um, since uh, since then, I have it probably every day in my in my bag for work and for my lunch. And um, it's a good advertising as well. So <laughs> nice. And so there was um, the second one um, from the same piece of, of wood um yeah really pretty it's i don't know if you can see and they didn't know that before but um blackthorn is really rich and on different colors so yeah some, some pink in it as well wow and um yeah really really nice uh, ryan i really enjoyed it to to carve um your template and the last one i just oiled it again um 
that's cherry. Beautiful. And because um, the piece was, um, I had some cracks on, on the back and I had to carve it away. So it's more thin than the other ones. Mm. And um, so I made um, facets on the back. That's sure. why I, what, I, what I tend to do on, on most eating spoons. It just feels quite comfortable to me. Yeah. And um, yeah, and the first one, so the first time that I tried um, acrylic paint. On mm -hmm. the yeah. That's it. Awesome. Well done, Poggy. All right. You drop back out to the gallery and who did I say was going to go next? Ah, there we go. Simon, thank you. <laughs> See, I'm almost 60. That, that's it. Memory's going. <laughs> can you guys hear me? Uh, just barely. Oh, okay. Maybe I can put it closer. Is it okay like this? Um, it almost sounds like you're in like coming through a microphone that's very far away. Oh, let me try if I can. I'm wondering if there's something with your audio settings. Yeah. Maybe like this is better? Yes, that's much better. That's much better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, one spoon here. I can show. So it's made of maple. Nice. Nice. Uh, so this is the first time I actually complete the the template in time. I've participated to all the rural, but I was always late. And yeah, that's the first time I can finish one, so I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm quite new to, to spoon carving, so it was a very challenging uh, template for me, especially uh, this part, for example. Yeah. And I had a very hard time to have like a clean surface. I've seen the video of we watch Plenty of time, uh, Ryan, doing the thing, and I, I still don't know how he does it in like two, two knives, you know, uh, go. And I, I did like 10, 20 times. It was really hard for me to have something clean. I, I don't know if you can see, but it's not even like that clean yet. But so yeah, I have to practice this, but it was nice because it was very challenging for me. I'm really not used also to do this kind of. Um, I don't know what you call this, but you know, like a hard transition like this between yeah. the and the ball. So that was also very difficult for me. But yeah, it was. Uh, it was looks, to me, looks to me like you nailed it. Well, I, I mean, I did, I did my best. I had, I had another one, but it's a fail. But I would like to show it anyways. Like it, it broke into piece pretty much. Yeah. I had, it had a, a node that I wanted to try to, to carve, but unfortunately, I don't know, there was something, maybe the, the wood was too wet or something, but it just cracked. I think I went too thin. Yeah. But I wanted to show it because it gave me an idea for another spoon. I just flipped it like this and tried to recollect it, and it could do like a soup spoon. <laughs> so, nice. yeah. Um, Sometimes it's a bit fr frustrating when you break or you can't go until the end of the spoon, but in this case, it just gave me an, an idea for maybe a future spoon. So, yeah, that was yeah. nice. Cool. And that's it for me. Awesome. Well, well done. And, and Rob, is this, your, is this your first time for Chris Petty? Yes, yes. The show itself? Right. Excellent. Yeah. Welcome. Glad to have you with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. All right. Move the spotlight. If you could just mute yourself again. Yeah. Awesome. Well done, Simon. All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Jody. Let me spotlight you real quick. Morning. Hey, good morning. Okay. I did um, two spoons out of walnut and um, black walnut, I, when I axed them out, I put them like back to back like this. Nice. And, and, and um, I also am lucky enough to have one of Ryan's spoons. So I don't, I would be curious to see what I would have done if I didn't have the spoon as a guide, because there were mm -hmm. some parts that I think um, overall, I would never have made it quite so thin because his spoon is just very, very thin, especially right um, 
in the end of the bowl here. And mm. then, um, yeah, like the same thing that other people struggled with, with the, um, the transition here. But it was really fun to work on. And I like trying to get all the little details of the facets and stuff. Um, yeah, you got your rim real nice. Looks great. You know. And then this one has the finial. The other one, um, I didn't have quite enough space. Very nice. Oh. Beautiful That's spoon, great, Jody. Great. Really nice job. Thank you. Those look really nice. Thanks. Yeah. Do you want to go? I like that. Yeah, I'll go. All right, I have someone else here with me. This is my cousin who I've sucked into carving, and this is yeah. he wanted to do a <laughs> challenge, and it's only his second spoon. Awesome! Yes, wow. All right. My second spoon. So I, I figured while I had a captive audience, I'd show off two spoons. So okay. don't. You can kick me off at any moment if you want to. But <laughs> this is my first one. I'll just be quick with it. Nice. And then this is. I had to do this one because I heard Ryan came up with the. With the template. template. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm totally new to this the template, so I figured I'd get in, and I got a little creative with the ebonizing. Yeah. And I. I ebonized it and then I trimmed the handle off a little extra back here. Yeah. And just left it. So it looks almost like a yeah. spalted wood. It came yeah, out, very came cool. Different. Really, yeah, really that was, nice. That looks really cool. I like that. I'm, I'm going to have to play with that ebonizing thing now. Like, uh, yeah, it yeah, that I, looks really cool. And this was kind of an afterthought, but I did the same thing on the bowl and I left it deep black on the tip and then yeah. kind of shaved into the deeper part to get like a. A Looks shade like to it. I don't know if you can like... see it, but very nice. Yeah. Anyway. Listen, this is a super challenging shape for your second spoon, so that's pretty darn impressive. <laughs> that's that's well good. done. <laughs> Excellent. Well, uh, just be forewarned, you've you've stepped out onto a very slippery slope, my friend. Before you know oh. it, you're gonna be, you know, spending hundreds of dollars on tools and oh, traveling to workshops and gatherings. And so just just be forewarned. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some uh, advice in that slippery slope because it's true. <laughs> anyway. Awesome. Well, glad to have you with us. Yeah. All right. Drop back out to the gallery. All right. Uh, Sean, I see you've anticipated my question. <laughs> I have. Well, I had to jump in uh, and say to Jody that uh, I can tell you exactly what happens when you don't have the uh, real spoon to use. This is also what happens when you don't really cut your template so well. I think that's probably maybe my my part of my excuse, but that's the template I started with. And then, it, well, generally it follows the template, which look how thin that is, ouch. So Jody, that's what happens uh, when you don't have a spoon to feel. <laughs> Another one there, look how thin that is on the bottom. It's just crazy. I like the, the profile's not bad, the, the front profile. I'm happy with that actually. Uh, here again, thin, too thin at the bottom. There, wow. the yeah, that's really that takes one little scoop, and I think it's gonna it's gonna go getting a little better there. Again, the, this is thin, and I like that too, and I like the profile, but still problem area. Then I start to get into, then I start to think I think I got this wrong, and uh, so I started to look online, and uh, thankfully folks start to post uh, some really beautiful pictures, so I start to get it that it's that's supposed to be that bit thicker there. So I like this one. This is made out of mulberry. The other ones were made out of uh, apple. Nice. And then, and then I uh, wanted to experiment with uh, the uh, the thin yolks. It's so beautiful. So I made this as a test piece and uh, just a little drilled hole and it fits in there quite nicely. I think that's kind of neat <laughs> as a uh, as a holder. And then I also one of my first spoons was uh, a failed attempt at uh, some veneering, uh, and this blew apart uh, the veneer delaminated. Yeah. But I glued wow. it that. Uh, I hope to try to uh, make it. And do I have enough wood left for a bit? Yeah, I do have enough wood for a thicker bottom. So hopefully I will end up with a nice spoon. Nice. Awesome. Well done, Sean. I'll tell you, some of those first ones are so thin, they almost look like, like going back to, what is it, Barnes says that the, the original translation of spoon was, was chip, like wood chip. They look so thin that they almost look like they could just be like a chip that came off from the axio, you know, splitting it off the piece of wood, and then you just shaped it into the shape of a spoon. <laughs> that's, but that's awesome. I think that's really cool. It won't take much for sure for this to shake off the uh, the, the yeah. part. 
Anyway, so Brian, uh, I really appreciated uh, you sharing. Thanks so much. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, design to explore <clears throat> and uh, I'm certainly not finished it, but thanks. Awesome, well done, Sean. So those will be your uh, hard ice cream spoons. <laughs> All right, let me jump back out to the gallery. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand, help me find you. Don't be shy. Come on, someone. All right, Patrice. So I saw Patrice, then Kaylin, then Isaac. So Patrice first, let me spotlight you. All right. All right, so I was lucky to get a really cool chunk of wood from George in the mail. And so it was the perfect size to start working on uh, Ryan's spoon, just not long enough to do the finial. Nice. But this really is pretty. Plum. Gorgeous. And I was kind of precious with it because I wanted to make sure I didn't, you know, ruin that gorgeous piece of plum. So um, the handle's a little thicker than I would have liked, but I like the swoop and then the bowl's pretty thin. Yeah. It has a big curve, so it looks thicker than it is, but yeah, it's pretty thin. And then the transition, I did not look at Instagram and I just kind of worked all the way up to like a point almost. So it looks yeah, yeah. very thin right there, but you know, there's a substantial amount of wood left. Nice. And so I just wanted to feature the beautiful areas of grain. And so I didn't cut too much in certain places because of that. And I don't know how yeah. much that altered the template. And I looked at a few that I liked online, on Instagram. And uh, done. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And this is only the second spoon that I've not put any sandpaper on. So I really love that I could get a pretty nice knife finish um, on this yeah. spoon. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. So you did great. It's, it's got a beautiful glow to it. Really, really nice. Yeah, it's, it's got pretty nice yep. shine. So I love that about this wood. Yep. And uh, it really highlights it a lot. But yep. Excellent. So that's it. I just, just did the one. Really nice job, Patrice. Fantastic. All right, let me jump back out so I can find Kaylin. Where are you? There you are. Let me spotlight you. There you are. Hey. Um, so I also am very lucky to have one of Ryan's spoons. It was actually one of my first spoon swaps that I did, um, which was pretty exciting for me. And this is yeah, but you I don't have one of those, do you? Huh? Not one of these, one. so yeah, this yeah. is just like a general Ryan spoon, but one of my favorite things about that spoon is the taper of the bowl. Like it looks so shallow, but there's this really beautiful like thickness to tapering to an edge. And I've always been jealous of that. And this spoon seemed to have that same kind of thickness to taper. So it was something I practice on here. Um, but I'm pretty excited about this. This is also the first time that I used a template that I tried to be perfect. Like I wanted these spoons to be just sharp and perfect and look exactly like the template. And so they're maple. And then I did some baking soda soaking for them. And then I baked mm. them. And uh, I'm really proud of these. So I went back to Ryan's video that he did with Kevin um, for the carving techniques and watched it a couple of times just so that I tend to be just a thumb pusher. Like I carve way more than I need to with one knife grip. And so these spoons, I also went back and just tried to do like varied knife grips, really trying to think through like the design of the spoon and getting the lines to work well. And I have, there were supposed to be a matching set of finials, but this finial I carved a little thin, but I painted this one silver. And then I did a little silver accent on the back of this spoon. Nice. I think turned out kind of neat as a little catch for light. But thank you, Ryan, for the template. These are 
um, a really cool form and that kind of like really nice shallow spoon, but having a great taper was something that for me to carve um, was helpful. And I'm excited to like bring that into other eating spoons because it's incredibly comfortable to eat with. I can't, <clears throat> I can barely even express like how impressed I am with those. It's amazing. As you're turning them, I'm looking at it and it's like, it could easily, it, it could have be sitting here in front of me like that. It's just crazy. And knowing like you don't, you don't, you don't have it. So it's like, it's crazy. That's just, I'm it really is impressive. Those are crazy. Nice. Yeah. Those are so nice. Yeah. They I are absolutely I gorgeous. I had a lot of Instagram photos from your feed, Ryan, just like on my computer and I was referencing them. So they could be, they took me a long time to carve, but they were supposed to be a wedding gift for friends, but I, I keep just like staring at them. They're the spoons that I wake up and stare at. Gorgeous, I mean, really that, that well done. That looks like an amazing wedding gift right there. Those look yeah. Cool. yeah, so nice. Let me, can I ask you, how long did you soak them in the baking soda solution? <clears throat> so maple doesn't take to baking soda very well. So I did two hours just to get a little bit and baking soda for big leaf maple actually makes it look a little ashen kind of gray. Okay. But this maple does not bake well either. So if you bake it without soaking it, it turns very light. Like it's just this kind of like barely like toast kind of right. down into it. So if you do the baking soda for two hours and then you bake it, that's where like this maple gets a really lovely color because otherwise interesting it's just like a very yeah maple yeah because that was I, I had done that that scoop that I turned into ash mm -hmm. in maple because I kept baking and baking and it wasn't turning it wasn't turning wasn't turning and I, before I finally cranked the heat up to like 450 next thing I know it's like smoke all through my house yeah. and it's a pile of ash <laughs> yeah and I've, I've accidentally scorched bowls before so one thing yeah. that I do as well is I bake them on tin foil and then I put like a little bowl yeah down. yeah um for baking and then I I love the baking soda trick. I can't remember who on Rise Up taught it to me, but I carve a lot of birch and, and light maple. Yeah. Um, so just like soaking it and then baking it gives a little bit of color. I leave them blonde if I'm gonna paint them just because they, they look yeah. I like the I like the light colored wood, but I <laughs> I've just I've heard a lot of people say that for whatever reason people tend if like when you're selling them anyway people tend to gravitate to the darker looks than the lighter looks. So, and I don't know whether that's like in cooking spoons, I guess I could understand maybe they're afraid it's going to take on like a red if you're doing a lot of tomato sauce or, or whatever. So anyway, beautiful, beautiful job, Kayla. Thanks. Really nice. And thanks for again, the template. And also for anyone who hasn't watched the video, if that's like my go-to now, if there's friends who are like, Oh, I want to learn how to carve. I'm like, watch Ryan. Like just, <laughs> it's an amazing video and the knife technique is fantastic so thanks again for providing that awesome yeah thank you ryan all right uh let me jump back out and i think i said isaac you were gonna go next right okay let me spotlight you and remember to unmute yourself so this is my first time doing uh, a swedish style eating spoon uh, I sort of got a pulmony bowl. I was going to say that's looking suspiciously influenced by the number nine. <laughs> uh, oh, that's Kevin's template. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Go ahead. This is, uh, uh, this is dog. One. The first one was maple. Nice. Sort of got the crank in the handle while this yep. one has it in the bowl. Right. Thank you. Awesome. Excellent. Well, glad you're here with our with us for the show and tell. Excellent job. All right. Uh-huh. You drop All right, back. This is my first time uh rise up. Yeah, this is your first show and tell, right? Right. All right, I think your internet connection's uh, a little shaky at the moment because your your audio kind of cuts in and out a bit. All right, who would like to go next? Wave a hand, please. All right, Maz, let me uh, get you spotlighted real quick. 
All right. So for the record, I'm pulled over. So uh, no shady driving while showing and telling. Um, <clears throat> I'm sitting in the parking lot of Woodcraft. So wish me luck for getting out of there without getting divorced. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the first one I did was uh, this one out of Birch, and I nice. got a little ridiculous with the decorating. But um, Ooh, I like it. My first time carving Birch. Do you know which and, ver uh, which variety of Birch? Uh, it's white Birch. Okay. So, uh, I got it from uh, Emily in New York. So. Okay. Uh, and then this one is cherry. Very Black nice. Cherry. Beautiful job on that finial. Nice. Thank you. And then uh, this one is what I like to call the took it too far. Um, it, it's basically like everything you can do to try and save it. And then it just turns out to be like an ugly state fair tattoo. <laughs> so uh, it broke. I used copper wire. The finial broke. I used copper wire. I shaved through the bowl. It's not thin at all, right? And uh, and then of course you know we just throw a, we just throw an ugly heart in the middle of it so yeah this is gonna go on the wall in the shop as just took it too far. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Great job, boss. Yeah. <laughs> too funny. All right. Well done, you. Good luck. Don't get divorced. Be disciplined, my friend. <laughs> All right. Buy everything. Don't listen to Chuck. <laughs> All right. Who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, John. Let me uh, get you spotlighted real quick. There we go. All right. I did too. I've got my mystery wood from the last one, from the 23. And I've got this... Uh, silver maple i did a second one because i wasn't sure this one was going to survive yeah it's all kind of pretty spalty spalting going through there grainy yeah but it, um ended up being okay nice really That's like the shape i did the uh calling it the kaolin baking soda treatment probably about 45 minutes to an okay. hour and I did the same thing with this one and it really did they were pretty pretty white so it really did bring out some nice color and nice my light's really crappy but there's really nice targets in both of them in the big bowls yeah very nice I just had a quick question like I noticed nobody is chip carving these and I wonder I mean, there seems like there's real estate, especially through here. Is, is it just the the shortness of the, the template? Just curious about people's opinions. Like almost nobody is chip carving these. Obviously, Mozzie had a little bit. Ian, I think Ian from, from Scotland, he did some chip carving in his spoons in the yeah. handle. I think Ian did a little bit too, yeah. Yeah. And um and this guy from South America, um, Michael Lee Camajo or something like that. Yeah. Um, he made a really nice chip carving job on this template too. And for example, for me, I was just happy not to have to chip carve anything. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Ryan. That's, that was a really that's cool absolutely couple. I, why I, I don't. I really like that uh, everybody is like honoring the temple, but everybody's like s just slightly unique on there. So I think I think it's... I think that just lends well to how cool the template is. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Awesome. Well, thanks, John. Great job. Yep. All right. Let me drop back out. And who would like to go next? All right. Oren, let me uh, get you spotlighted. Hey. Hi, Captain. Take it away. <laughs> yep. Can't carve without it. Enjoy to do that with you. Carved a few of these, I see. Go to blooms. <laughs> Go to yeah, blooms. I, yeah. Usually, when I do a, 
um, any one of the templates. I, the first thing I did, it took me out of my comfort zone, which was so great because I got to do something a little bit different, but this was very much in my comfort zone. I really enjoyed it. So instead of using my template, I just pulled Ryan's template and just went through uh, a bunch of these. Um, I really like the Swedish eating uh, pocket spoons. So these were really great. And I was lucky enough to have one of Ryan's originals, um, which I don't happen to have with me right now because I lent it out to uh, somebody else from my spoon club. They all did these as well this weekend um, that wanted to look at the details very close up. Um, let's see. So I, I can't usually believe you gave it away. <laughs> no, no, it's coming back. It was supposed to come back yesterday. But, uh, it's a lending library. <laughs> I'm going to cry myself <laughs> to sleep it, tonight. It, it really is. Part of the reason I don't eat with everybody's spoons is so I can uh, feel comfortable for people to handle them. Do we need um, to talk about this again? We'll talk about it here. <laughs> Um, so I, I usually go for my, uh, my go-to wood, which is uh, Laquat. And um, this is a very, very spalted piece. Uh, um, I felt it uh, gave it, uh, it was a, a, a wood that was worthy of this uh, template. And I didn't want to, um, to get rid of the finial and put my usual uh, snail finial. So I just had the snail climb over the top of the, uh, the, top of the finial. <laughs> I, I love that so much. I that is it so cool. <laughs> yeah, I tried to stay as close as I could in these um, to the uh, Ryan original um, with these sharp corners and with this little raised lip right here. Yeah. Um, but I didn't do that with all of them. A few of them, I went back to more of my my style, which uh, it runs as a clean straight line here and rounds off back here and I think it works really nicely with this template yep. as well. And I did a couple of these in, uh, in granite. This is uh, uh, Indian rosewood, which is, is one of the hardest woods it's I have around here. Granite. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was worth it. Um, and that's it. I just had a lot of fun with this. And I think it's gonna be one of these templates that's gonna stick around here. Uh, uh, show heard. mine! Show mine! Oh, sorry. Jude, can you get the <laughs> spoons? They're in, next to the garbage. <laughs> yeah, they're not really next to the garbage. They're on the table. <laughs> so, while, they're, while he's sorting that out, I mean, it was a joke, isn't it? But I'm just curious now, are there spoons in stone? Have, has anybody seen or made, have they ever like carved spoons in actual stone? That's a good question. Gotcha. My wife is going to check. She has she has internet. Um, I've seen uh, this one. It does sound like a perfect Orin project, honestly, to carve a spoon out of stone. That's right. If anyone's going to do it, it's probably Orin. What make was that done? To make the spoon. Don't dare me, please. Jade, a ancient Egyptian ones out of jade. Wow. Oh, no. Yeah. They weren't really eating spoons. More for 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 fuel. Cocaine. Okay. But they're still spoons. <laughs> They are spoons. So here's Alon's spoons. Alon doesn't always do the templates. Alon, you talk. I'll hold the spoon. <laughs> nice. Anyway, so <laughs> Alon also did Indian rosewood right here. This is was very hard. It's a very challenging wood. And this one is in uh, Spalted Laquat. Alon always goes into my stash and steals my best wood. That is such gorgeous wood. Gorgeous wood. And he did something nice here. I, uh, he, he made the handle longer. I think it re works really yeah. well. That is just like Ryan was saying, he mixed and matched. So yeah, I think maybe I'll try this one with uh, yeah. the longer handles and see, see what happens. Really nice job, Alon. I don't think, Alon, this is the, this is the template. So I don't know. No. <laughs> and this is a bowl, so it's not relevant. Thank you. Alan. Nice work. Both of you really well done as always, Oren. And uh, great job. Thank Alan. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I thought you were going to put them into the stove. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Spectacular job. All right. Let me go back to the gallery and uh, who wants to go next? Wave a hand. 
All right, Don. Let me let me make sure I'm highlighting the right one. Spotlight this one. Gotcha. All right, you should be able to hear me from the other one as well. Yep. So, um, you know, uh, as I often do, I literally took the uh, challenge as to mean I needed to carve it in the last few hours of the morning before presenting it. <laughs> uh, so Bill and Tamir were here to see me ax this out. Um, still a bit rough. It's uh, some spalted black cherry. Um, but I'll, I'll be able to get this finished up uh, in a day or two once it dries out and do all the finishing cuts. Really, really nice template, Ryan. Um, really enjoyed doing this one. Um, and I, I just felt I had to do a, if I can get it to focus on the- Stacked rocks. <laughs> yeah, that finial's looking sweet. I like that. The, the ridiculous stacked mega finial. Nice. Uh, but re really, um, Interesting wood to carve. It's I, as I said, it's not finished, so it looks a bit messy at this point. But um, really, really nice. Quite, quite enjoyed it. I'll probably carve a couple more of these as well. Really, really pretty, beautiful wood. I, yeah, I, I look don't forward have to seeing them. Spoons. I don't know why I didn't uh, swap one with them when I was at Pat's. Right. Next year. It's a shame. Yeah, next year. I have to it. say. This template actually, for me, kind of harkened, it, it, it's different, but similar in uh, feel in terms of the, the bigger bull, the slightly smaller handle to the original template, which was Don's number one template, which was also heavily Swedish influenced. Um, right. So. Yeah, yeah, you know, actually I have a Don spoon that one. is is very much like my, like this one. Um, yeah. So I agree with that, yeah. I mean, it's diff definitely different. They've, they've got, you know, yeah, differences. It's got a, you know, a, a really pretty good size bowl on it. Yeah. The handle's almost dead on to the same length. Oh, yeah. There we go. So Really cool. Nice. So thanks again, Ryan. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Great job. Hey, keep panning that camera around. Maybe we'll see some loose Nick Westerman blades hanging around. Uh, the only loose blades are this one uh, that belongs to Dominic and this one, which also belongs to Dominic, and we'll be going into handles later today. Nice. Awesome. And that's just a tease to everybody else. <laughs> well, I don't have any more blades, but I have a lot more of that tigery, maple-y stuff uh, somewhere you can see it, or at least there we go. Sorry, hold on. I pulled the spotlight. Let me go back to it. There we go. Nice. Wow. So I have enough for another five or six handles. So in another two or three months, when I get another batch of plates, I'll, I'll let you all know. <laughs> cool. All right. Great job, Don, as always. Thanks. Yes. All right. Let me go back to the gout leg. leg. Before I do that, shoot. Ah, I forgot to remove. The, oh, you signed out, so I don't have to remove the spotlight. Okay. Back to the gallery. And Tamir. Let me get you spotlighted real quick. There we go. All right. So I am not like Don. I'm not able to crank out a spoon in the morning. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I wasn't able to get to this template yet, but I think it's fair game to show the lap template. Um, sure why so not i'm actually i'm actually finishing these right now so they're not oiled um and they're not totally done yet but yeah this is nice. number, number 23 um uh, dominic's template i really love the design and uh this one's got a little bit of sapwood nice super back. crisp looking really yeah. really nice so yeah i'm, I'm nearly done I'll, they'll, they'll look nice with some oil and they, I was telling some people earlier, they came out of the tree like this. Um, so yeah, th these have been fun to carve. And I definitely took a lot of inspiration from Kaylin as well. She cranked out a bunch of really nice ones too. Yeah, they were um, spectacular. Yeah. So awesome. Been fun Wait. And hoping to get to Ryan's very soon. <laughs> awesome. Great job, Tamir. Those look fantastic. Thanks, guys. All right. Drop back out to the gallery. 
And who would like to go next? Wave a hand. All right, Kate, let me get you spotlighted. Hi, everyone. Hey. Welcome. Welcome to the new people who are here for the first time. Um, what else? Uh, okay, so usually I, sorry, I'm still not a morning person. And <laughs> the sun did come up though, so I came outside. Nice. Um, Anyway, I uh, usually I kind of play fast and loose with the size on my templates and I like make smaller ones or whatever. But this one, I was like, I'm going to try to make the right size, you know, and um, so but then I accidentally chopped off like at the corner on my the, the end of the handle. So it actually is the right length, but including the finial. But anyway, here, this is um, it. And then my other. So it's, um, I painted it nice. um, a little bit and I freshly oiled it this morning because I was not done yet, but yeah. So here's that. Then cherry? Yes, yeah, cherry. And then I did put, uh, I put the bowl into baking soda. I learned that, yeah, from Craig Ramsey actually. Um, and you can tell like trees grow so fast out here you can see those growth rings mm. are so wide um but anyway so um what else oh my biggest challenge with ryan's template and i don't have his beautiful spoon to to, to see but i know from other people's ryan's spoons that the bowl is so shallow so and i tend to go kind of deeper on my bowls and so I was like, I have to really try and make sure I don't go. So I did. I think I did a good job of like keeping it uh, shallow. I don't know. It's not good. Like, uh, I don't know. That looks yeah. pretty appropriate for what I would yeah. do. Yeah, I think so. Um, and then I don't know. You can't. I did like a worn out coloring on it. Um, painting. Yeah, I like the effect. It's kind of neat. Yeah. And I did like kind of a pewtery type shiny you can't really it's kind of hard to tell but on the shiny top finial there yeah but anyway it was it was great to carve um definitely you know made me practice some stuff and um i just like that swoopy handle like here if i can do a lefty here yeah it fits in my hand so well you know yeah and um so I think it's just going to be nice. I, I want to carve more. I wanted to carve like, you know, I always have these great intentions to carve so many of these. <laughs> right. And I like barely get one. <laughs> but anyway. Yep. Likewise. You, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great job, Kate. Really nice. All right. Let me remove the spotlight and drop back out to the gallery. All right. Hello, Who would Kate like to go Wolf. next? What was that? I have a I have a question for Kate, if you don't mind. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Uh, she said something earlier about the rings of in the wood, you know, that trees are growing really fast here. And uh, I don't really understand the relationship, you know, how it, how it works. So does she mind explaining a little bit more? Or anybody, I don't really mind. I just want to know what, what that means, you know. Yeah, so... Um... When a tree, uh, I'm like, how much? So the so the tree grows one ring per year, mm -hmm. or one line. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, two. You're right, Suzanne. It's it's two. It has a one th uh thicker and one thinner. The the cell walls. Mm -hmm. Maybe Suzanne. I don't know. <laughs> so <laughs> Do can you, add, can you add to it, Suzanne? Yeah. Uh, it has to do with the season. During okay. winter and autumn, uh, most trees slow down and grow slowly. Don't get okay. much nourishment. Then okay. is when you get these dark rings. Mm -hmm. And when it's light and wide, that mm -hmm. is during spring and summer when they get a lot of nutrition and a lot of sun, and then mm -hmm. they can so much more that's why you have these 
different changes in the grain. Okay, understood. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. So the faster Thank you. it grows, the wider the wider the, the, the ring the, is going to be. Spring. Yes. Yeah, in the spring, the wider the 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 ring is. Yeah. Mm. Okay, understood. Got the point. Some trees have much more prominent growth rings than others. So, uh, you know, a tree like a cherry or um, it's going to be, you'll be able to see it a lot easier than some others. So if you look at all trees, they do have growth rings. It's just, it varies on the intensity. Uh, makes sense. I, I live in Portugal and I see lots of um, pine tree wood, you know, and it's, its rings are always very, very wide. So now I get uh, get to understand that uh, even in the summer, even in the winters, we have lots of uh, sunlight. So it keeps growing, you know, all the time. And it has a good pace of growing. So that's why it has more thicker rings. Yeah, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Welcome, thank you. And welcome, by the way. And welcome to you, Suzanne. And to anybody else here who may be here for the first time or maybe not uh, really glad to have all of you here with us. Um, hey, all right. Ask the person who asked the question, can you say your name for, for me? <laughs> it's Sukhvinder. Sukhvinder? Okay. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Nice to meet you. Excellent. Well, welcome Sukhvinder. Thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. All right. Who would like to go next? Anjali. All right, let me get you spotlighted. Hello. Welcome. Uh, so I don't know. I like your workspace. Thank you. I think I've kind of messed up a uh, template and I've cracked the bowl also, but I went ahead and finished it anyways. I made it a bit shorter. It's not finished, but uh, yeah. All right. What what kind of wood is that? It's mulberry, but doesn't look like it because I think it's, it's a very new wood. Like it was, okay. It was a very small branch, so it, it was behaving a bit different. Also, like you know, yeah. Nice. But this was my first time following a template and uh, it was a bit challenging for me because, you know, uh, and still I ended up making this too thin. That's what I do all the time. And yeah. this time I thought, I, since I'm following a template and, you know, it might help, but uh, in the middle, I lost the template. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I just did the same mistake again. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was from the forgotten moment, but yeah. I found a, that while, while I was working <clears throat> on the spoon, on the back of the bowl, especially, like I hadn't, I had gotten the neck narrowed down uh, fairly tight, but I hadn't yet done that transition from the, the handle into the back of the bowl. And as I'm trying to carve away the wood on the back of the bowl, and I was carving in maple, which was fairly hard wood, um, I found myself, um, kind of whacking into the side of the handle as I was trying to carve like yeah. a wood from from the back edge of the bowl and I'd, I'd constantly be whacking into the side of the handle and then I'd have to because I was chopping that up I'd have to take more away and so it's real easy uh, to end up taking too much wood away from that I have not yet watched Ryan's videos uh, so I really want to go back and watch his demo because I'm sure he probably has a different order of operations. I probably should have been concentrating on taking that wood away from the back of the bowl before I narrowed my handle down um, to avoid that, yeah. that challenge. But like there's there's that. And then of course you do run into that uh, with the swoop of the handle, um, you know, going both directions and trying to get it to, to align and get a nice smooth transition where the grain changes from the downhill on both sides. And it's real easy to end up sharpening that into a v rather than having a nice smooth saddle so yeah, yeah. definitely a challenge so sorry there, i didn't mean there, to there's like a 
sorry there, there's been electricity cuts so you might not see me well <laughs> but oh <yeah>. no worry <laughs> awesome well great job anjali and, and we're really well happy to have you with us thank you thanks a lot all right who would like to go next Can I tell you that I found a spoon out of stone? Ah, yes, I see you've posted about it. Oh, cool. Yeah, soapstone, and it's uh, very useful. And I don't know exactly where, it, uh, where they take it from, but up here in Scandinavia, it's very common. And uh, it's used in um, fireplaces because it stores the heat really good. Right, yeah, and yeah. Soapstone in uh, English. Yep. Yeah. Soapstone was a big thing here in the U.S. too. I know that there's a, a company that in Vermont, I think, that makes uh, wood stoves out of soapstone. And uh, likewise, I remember my parents had an old, we used to live in a, in a, a house was built in the 1800s and had a big soapstone sink in the basement. Um, cool stuff. Awesome. I'll check that, uh, check that link out. Thank you. All right, Kevin. Hey, so Kevin. Good Let me morning. spotlight you real quick. Oh, great. <laughs> so um, I think I was on Rise Up with Ryan the first time he joined, or real early anyway. And I'd seen his Instagram before that. So when he joined, he said something along the lines of like, I've not ever done a spoon swap before with another carver. So I love to do spoon swaps with carvers that are new and who haven't done a spoon swap before because when I got my first spoon by another more experienced carver, it was like a revelation and it really upped my game. So the thought of providing another carver with that was awesome. And then Ryan right away was like, all right, great. And I got a spoon in the mail like two days later and it was amazing. And I said, shit, because I thought, <laughs> I thought I was swapping with someone who was new and they were gonna get my spoon and be blown away by it. And I was gonna have such a great experience. And as soon, and I think Ryan sent me like two or three spoons and they were all amazing. One of them is this guy that I, so I carve a lot of spoons and use a lot of spoons where the bowl is oversized. And I really like that. And everyone always says, how do you fit that in your mouth? And Ryan's spoon manages to have a long, uh, a larger bowl without having that problem because he elongated the bowl this way, which I thought was mm. so clever. Anyway, um, so it took me almost a year to fulfill my end of the swap with Ryan because I needed to have a really good spoon to give him. And it wasn't until <laughs> Flipnocky Woods that I actually fulfilled my swap with Ryan. So that was just all about, I can't send this guy one of my crap spoons when he his spoons are so awesome. <laughs> then um, another story was we had made that demo with George and everyone loved it and it was so well received. And then I wanted to do another one and I was fascinated by Ryan's spoons, and so was Kaylin. So we had the idea to film one with Ryan. And if anyone hasn't watched it, it turned out really well. I'm really proud of it. I think Ryan enjoyed it. I think Ryan's proud of it. And it really demonstrates some amazing carving. If you, I am fascinated by people that can carve a spoon once. They just touch every surface once. They have their process nailed down. They go, mm -hmm. now I'm going to carve this rim. Okay, now I've carved that rim. That looks great. That rim is done. And they never touch it again. And uh, all of Ryan's carving looks controlled and looks approachable and looks like, yeah, I could do that too. He doesn't swing his axe anything special. He doesn't use his knives anything special, but he hits it the first time. He nails it. And he has all these times where he like, carves half of it away because that's easy. Then he carves the other part away because it's easy. And then he does a smoothing cut because it's easy. And it doesn't ever look like he's doing anything challenging. He just gets it done and he just like nails it. And obviously that betrays a real ability and experience level. That's not obvious to someone if you're not like, Jesus, he does that one. He, he did that in like a second and he's done. And he did the whole spoon in like 20 minutes. Um, so it's really um, a good video to watch and a nice one to have kind of to refer people to and and to review and I thought Ryan was going to be like a mountain man because he's got that I'm um, a big dude with a big beard kind of aesthetic and we know he has every axe known to man so I thought he was going to be this big dude that carved spoons with big swings and it was going to be really outrageous 
And he doesn't. He's just like chip, 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 chip. There's the rim, chip, 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 chip. chip. There's the back. Um, so it was really a delight to make that and watch. Um, so really I kind carved... of interesting this image I evidently present that I'm not necessarily aware of. Yeah, you definitely present like mountain man, I think. Plus, you have that Midwest accent, which to me is always like drinking beer you. or watching sports. So that it, it always, it always have, has that. We have no accent. Everybody else has an accent. Didn't you know that? Right? <laughs> you have that DeBear Chicago like, accent. Kevin? Yeah, I've had this. My, my father grew up in Chicago, and he's been saying my whole life, everyone around here has an accent. I don't. It's the same exact joke. Um, so I made two before this challenge even started because I was so interested and I can't find one of them, which is a shame because that first one, I said, this cool tiny spoon, I'm going to knock out a bunch of these and I'm going to give them to friends thinking that because it was small, it would be easy. This was before I saw the video when I just had one of Ryan's spoons and I tried to knock one out and it was not easy. It took me like six hours and I, and I fussed and fretted over the details especially the corner, the sharp corners where the handle meets the back of the spoon. Anyway, one of them I don't have, but I don't, it's not that big a deal. This one is the second one I carved. And because of a split down in the bottom corner, this one had to become more of an oval. The whole spoon is like an oval. Um, I had to carve away a cut, which I had to carve away something. And I think that kind of over, I think that kind of ovular bowl is kind of cool. Obviously it's not, the same as Ryan's designs. This one still needs smoothing cut. It's in like a bird's eye cherry. And then another one is in process that I wanted to complete before today, but I didn't. This is in the same bird's eye cherry. So I don't have too much in the way of my own stuff to show and tell. I just wanted to talk about Ryan, how great his spoons are and how cool that video is. And I think you can tell the amount of people who are saying, I'm lucky enough to have a Ryan spoon that Ryan carves a lot and he's incredibly generous with his swaps and his giveaways. Um, and they're all, they're all fantastic. He's clearly a person that carves a lot and knows exactly what he's doing. I have these two of his in this shape and I have one in a different shape and they're all amazing. This is the one from the video, which I'm proud to have. So thanks Ryan. Ryan's a pretty constant presence in the East coast afternoons on rise up. He's a good guy to have Ryan and in the community and a good guy to know. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Kevin. I don't know what to say. Thank you. Oh, Thanks. pleasure. Pleasure. Easy to say. Those are easy things to say. All right. Who would like to go next? All right, George. Hey, George. Hold on. Let me get you spotlighted. Yes. Hello. Um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this template, too. And um, um, I, I, and this video of Brian is really, 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 really nice. So I did my video before and then he was doing his and I was like, Why? nobody watched my one now <laughs> because he just <laughs> made it done. Really nice, really great. You know so, that's uh, not true, George. Yes, it is. So um, I really struggled with this transition from the handle and I never do things like Hey, George, your internet looks like it your connection has gotten a little weak, so you're freezing. Keep keep trying. Uh, yeah, so um, is it better right now like this? Yeah, it's all right. It's better. Okay. So um, I struggle with the this 90 degree handle to bowl transition. So I normally make there um, some, some kind of floating thing. So I think this was the first one I made. It looks nice but um when you look close so the, the the bowl is like off in an angle so and and the the, the handle uh went too small because of the split so made another one and I, I think this was the second one and i really try to get this done where the handle meets the bowl and try to accent it with this little uh extra cut or extra corners. And then because I'm in Italy, I have some sweet chestnut. Uh, so this is the third one, I think. Uh, and I tried some evenizing and that I'm really happy with that because this wood is turning just like black. So this cherry or plum or whatever I normally use and evenize is turning another color, but this just turns black and that's 
Wow. And, and I like, and I just like the template. I, it's, it's, I really struggle with eating spoons. I do a lot of uh, serving and, and cooking spoons, um, but eating spoons, the accuracy you need to do for that is uh, always something I'm struggling a bit with. And yeah, but yes, I enjoyed it. And I have a um, spoon of Ryan too. So uh, that really helps me. So I didn't really print out the template. I just took his spoon, which is quite exactly the template and just try to stick to it. And also this swoop up handle thing, I normally don't do. I, I normally do it the other way around. So it was some kind of, and normally I'm l less doing symmetric spoons. So it, it was in any sort of direction, the opposite of what I normally do. And that was the challenging and the fun part of it. Awesome. Did you, did you use the spoon meal? Uh, no, I don't have the spoon here with me, so I even right. had to right. get, it was get totally different get off that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> no wow. Spoon meal, no transition. No, no everything. Different wood. <laughs> and I like. I'm it. proud. I really got you to to diverge from your norm. Right. Oh, definitely. 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 Awesome. Great so job, George. Yeah. Really cool. And normally, normally I do a few more spoons of, of a template, but without a spoon meal, I, it just took me too long. <laughs> All right, now go back to sipping your wine and enjoying your Italian countryside overlooking a lake. <laughs> uh, I think I just, you know, better turn the video around because it's just much better than. Oh, I, now I now I have to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can wow! Just put the camera Stop like that. Stop, and Stop rubbing you, it. You off. can. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel yeah. I feel so bad from a spoon meal and having to do everything the opposite of the way you normally do. Yeah, it's okay. The the wine, wine, pasta, and pizza uh, pay, pays it off. It's okay. Nice, awesome, great job, George. That ebonizing especially looks spectacular on that spoon. That really looks great. All right. Yeah, I was I was surprised by myself too. All right, I see Kyle waving a hand. So Kyle, you're up. Let me uh, get you spotlighted. Good. All right. <clears throat> so I don't have a Ryan spoon here because someone came to my house and stole it. Um, this is a Ryan spoon that he sent me. I think it's out of crab apple, he said. I guess we're going to show off each other's spoons. I I am in uh, in possession of Can you Kyle's spotlight number Ryan twenty-four Chuck? here. Hold on, wait. So wait, Ryan has. All right, now I got to spotlight Ryan. Hold on. <laughs> I don't know if both will show up. So Ryan, say something. They both did. Okay. Cool. All right. So this is Kyle's number 24, but Kyle gets to talk about it. Okay, yeah. So my printer was out of ink, and doing this ugly template wasn't enough of a reason to get a new cartridge. So <laughs> I just went I just went from this one, um, and I uh, just drew it on a piece of wood and went at it. Um, so it's a little bit different than um, the actual template. My handle ended up being a little bit smaller, and... Uh, I can't see Ryan anymore. Is he spotlighted or not? He is, but I think I think he only shows up if he talks. So oh, okay. gotcha. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take the spotlight off of you, Kyle. There. Now you can talk, but Ryan will still, I think, appear. Okay. Good. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I think most of the details are consistent with this profile. Like I said, the handle got a little bit smaller on me. Um, it's from Red Maple. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun to do the template. I don't usually use templates just because I'm better than him. Um, but uh, it was fun to switch it up and see see what I could do with, uh, with this template. So <laughs> thanks, Ryan. So was it a conscious decision to go with like a not level bowl? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. But no, it was well, a lot of fun. In that case, it's it's really nice. 
Thanks. It was fun. Thanks for the template. No, sincerely though, this is a some seriously nice spoon. I've used it uh, at almost uh, almost every meal now since I've gotten it, and intend to continue so. So I really like this spoon. Nice. Oh, I was surprised here. actually. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, drop back out to the gallery. Great job, Kyle. Uh, and thank you, uh, Ryan, for acting as spokesmodel for the Kyle. Uh, you know, you you can you have a second career coming as a hand model, right? All right. Who would like to go next? Who's not yet gone? All right, Carl. Let me uh, get you a spotlight real quick. All right. Remember to unmute yourself. Yep, you got it. Um, this is my first time on the uh, the challenge, and I've only been on the uh, uh, Zoom site for probably half a dozen times at most. Um, well, welcome. We're happy to have you here with us. Thank you. But I uh, decided to try the challenge, and uh, this is out of a, a piece of um, wild apple. Um, nice. Had one problematic spot because there is a not right at the very end of Tip. the bowl. Yeah. Uh, but with a little CA glue to firm it up and the likes, uh, it uh, it came across fine. Nice. Uh, the transition from the handle to the bowl was uh, a challenge, but uh, I think it worked out well. Um, and apple obviously gives a beautiful color. Uh, and I don't know whether it'll show up in this, but there's actually some pinkish yeah. uh, in, in that wood. Yeah. It showed through. Really um, nice. I've carved spoons prior, but they were mostly uh, Celtic love spoons. And But I've only carved about maybe, maybe a dozen of them at, at most. Uh, but since I heard about this through Sean, um, I've carved probably eight or ten other spoons. Uh, this is the only one that I finished from a template and worked from the template um, or the challenge at least. And I'm in the midst of a number 16. Um, and it's a, it's a work in progress. So it's been a it's been interesting to uh, to join the group. Uh, my background is actually um, uh, wood training, uh, which I do extensively. So this is kind of a side trip away from wood turning and uh, it, it's, it's been fun. Enjoyed it. Thanks. Awesome. Great job. That's nice looking. That crab apple is really pretty. Really, really pretty wood. Beautiful job. All right. And welcome. Uh, really happy to have you here with us. So very cool. Sorry, distracted. My daughter was asking me questions. Anyway, um, okay. Who would like to go next? Who's not yet had a chance to go? Wave a hand if you've not yet gone and you have a spoon that you want to share. Anybody? All right, Phil. And then Fangster. I didn't see you sneak in here. Awesome. All right, Phil, take it away. Cheers, Chuck. So, so firstly, I had a go at the spoon, obviously, picked out the template, printed off, all the normal sort of stuff. Uh, and I did four to start with in Birch. And I was lucky enough to get some one-on-one -on -one coaching from two really great people. From Ryan himself, the master, who told me my two spoons were too bloody fat, but in better words than that, of course. And then from Kevin, who helped me overcome the challenge of carving the top of the rim of the bowl. So to both of those, thanks for the coaching, guys. Really, really did help. I'm sure when I finally do make it to the States, it's going to cost me, but um, we'll see what happens. So... <laughs> On to the quick show of spoons, because that's not what I do. I don't do showing spoons generally, but I will today. So I did four like this one, because I was trying to get used to it. And they took ages and ages. And then after Ryan and Kevin had sort of given me some of the golden clues, um, this one took me about an hour. So things nice. have changed quite, quite a lot. But most importantly for me was it was great fun and it was great to have the coaching. So thanks to all of you. Awesome. Thanks, Phil. Great job. What kind of wood were those? So the birch for the first ones and cherry for the last one. Nice. Great job. All right. 
Let me drop back out and find Fangster. There he is. Let me spotlight you, Fang. And remember to unmute yourself. Yep. All right. Take it away. What's up, guys? Um, yeah, this was a fun challenge. This is my first template challenge. I don't usually use templates, but I met Ryan at Pat's and uh, seemed like a good way to break into the scene. So, um, I started off with some black walnut. My first one, I got a little bit thin. I don't usually, I, I've never carved anything with this real deep tail flip here. Mm. So I found I got a little bit thin, a little bit too thin trying to come in and break into the crank. So the second one, I think I, I stayed a little bit more beefy. And uh, nice. this one really, I think is my, my version that, does Ryan's versions a little bit of justice um, painted the finial. I really like the way that what's that. What's that one made out of black walnut. Oh, is it? Wow. That one's really pretty. It is very pretty. Some cool figure on this one. Um, I like the way that Ryan did his finials painted them up. He, the one he gave me was kind of a cool shiny purple. And I really dig that. So I had a little bit of fun, did a little bit of polka dots um and then for my third one i used his template but i went a little bit freestyle and kind of did a little bit of my version of a handle and a different bowl and still stuck with the finial so i experimented with the first stayed real rigid with the second and then i played with the third uh, and i had a lot of fun with this challenge thanks ryan for the template it's cool to meet you cool to get involved with this um, I'm sure I'm going to keep up. My man, those are really cool. Yeah, really, really cool. Nice. Really glad to have you here with us, Matt. Yeah, good to be here. Thanks, man. Good to see you. Likewise. All right. Let me drop back out to the gallery. And who would like to go next? Who hasn't had a chance yet? Anybody? Have we missed anybody? Anybody have a spoon to share? I'm going to give it another couple seconds, and then if not, I'm going to go. All right. I think it's back to me then. So spotlight on me. So um, this is probably the best Ryan spoon that uh, I've got, and it's the only Ryan spoon that I've got. Um, and it's a fabulous Ryan spoon that I too have. Uh, I got this one at Pat's. So I was late to getting uh, a Ryan spoon apparently. And oh my God, what a fabulous spoon. It's This thing is just wonderful. I actually got it for my wife because her favorite color is purple. And so I too have one with one of these really shiny purple finials. And uh, it's I've kind of repossessed it. <laughs> <laughs> from my wife. So I end up using it all the time. Um, fantastic spoon, super crisp uh, facets. And uh, I was actually, when I went to try and carve it, I was shocked at just how thin uh, like everything is. Um, but it's still, I mean, super strong, super, you know, uh, not beefy is the wrong word. Uh, it, how do you describe that? It's, it's like thin, but not delicate. <laughs> um, and stout work? Yeah, stout. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really nice. So this is my first attempt. I've got a second one that's in progress, but I didn't get it finished in time to bring. But so this is mine. This is in maple. Um, I did, went with a green finial because green is my favorite color. Um, I am not quite as thin as Ryan's. Uh, his just there's an elegance to his that I didn't quite get there on this first attempt. Mine's a little chunkier in the, whatever this would be, the, the reverse keel sort of thing. Um, it's a chunk, bear in mind on that. The one of mine that you have was a particularly hard, it's a mystery wood, but it was like super hard when I was carving it. So I felt more comfortable to go a little bit thinner in areas than others. Yeah, are. okay, that so makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, I also noticed that I tended to get in the swoop of the handle, at least for this version that I have. Um, I'm not sure. I have to go back and compare to the template. I forget. But Ryan's got 
it, it's sort of a longer uh, lead down and then a quicker tail flip up. Whereas I think I ended up keeping mine more just kind of a consistent curve through it. So I didn't quite get that right. Um, but I was pretty pleased that I got the, the hard transition, I thought, pretty clean. I did have the facets well, but I tend to burnish my spoons. And I find that when I burnish, it, it rounds off the facet, the edges, and they just don't come across as crisp. Your, the thing that I really admire uh, in this spoon from you, Ryan, is that everything is comfortable. It's like it's crisp but somehow it's not sharp. It's not like sharp, like the corners don't cut in the hand. It's very comfortable in the hand, but it still looks super clean and crisp. And so um, burnishing is definitely not the way to achieve that because it rounds all the facets over and then they just don't, they don't show up as cleanly. Um, so anyway, I definitely have work to do. I, I also left my bowl. I found my bowl, yours is super, refined it's it's like there's that like kaylin was saying there's that chunkiness in the back i too tend to go deeper in my bowl and not as shallow as you and so i did go deeper um but yet out at those rims at the, those edges it's quite it's it's just as beautifully thin um uh, but tapered up to it in a very clean way and i sort of am getting there but it's not quite there yet um so it was a lot of fun to carve love this this template, love the shape. Uh, I, and I've yet to go back and watch your video. So I've really got to do it. I, I kept meaning to do it um, while before I carved it, I just found myself not getting around to it. Um, so that's something I definitely want to do. But thank you very much, Ryan. Excellent template. Folks, I am really, really uh, impressed with all the work that everybody has done. Uh, like the that. spoons that are up in the gallery or, uh, you know, with the hashtag uh, posted up are just spectacular. Um, everybody really knocked it out of the park on this challenge. And thank you everybody for, for coming out uh, for this show and tell. Uh, it's really great to see so many people here. Um, so at this point, uh, we've been going for an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen unless, is there anybody else here who's come in who didn't get a chance to show a spoon who has a their spoon that they want to show did i miss anybody i think we've got everybody okay i'm going to share my screen then and we'll do a quick walkthrough of what we've got up on the sharepoint so let me do that share my screen and maximize this, boom. Uh, let me refresh it. Are you guys able to see my screen? I can. I can. Okay, cool. Uh, let me get down to the bottom, we'll go in reverse order. Might as well some go bears too while we're at it. Is that the bottom? I can't tell. It looks like it's still trying to refresh, but I think that's it. Okay. I totally missed what Kate said. What did Kate say? She said go bears. Yeah, because Ryan's from Chicago, so I had to say go bears. Go bears. Go bears, unless you're playing the Bills. All right. Let me uh, jump in here. And so this is, oh, I've totally forgotten to mention uh, the template for our next challenge is up on riseupandcarve.com. So this will be Rack Spoon Challenge number 25. And this is a pie server by Emily Rigsby. So the template, uh, uh, Emily and Sonny uh, worked to get the template put together. Sonny, thank you if you're still around. Thank you for getting that posted up onto the site for doing the PDF. Uh, so we have a pie server for our next template. It's going to be a longer time uh, this time around because I'm going to be away for a couple of weeks on vacation. Emily had some conflicts. Um, so the show and tell for Ruax Spoon Challenge 25 is not going to be until September 11th. So you have five weeks, folks, 
to uh, do some pie servers. So go nuts, have fun with this one. Um, it'll be, be interesting to see. So uh, thank you, Emily, for the, the template. And thank you, Sunny, for getting that put together and posted up on the site. All righty, so this is Jeff Fryett from New Zealand. Uh, and his spoons are always spectacular. So really, really interesting. Not quite the template, but interesting. That one's there. Nice. Do I go this way? I do. So there's the template. Uh, nope, I had to go the other way. Okay, David, this is his stuff. This is, wow, Cypress, look at that. What color, holy crap. Nice. Wow, that really is spectacular coloring in that. By the way, folks, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to make comments as we're as I'm going through these. You don't have to stay on mute at this point. More Jeff Fryat. This oak changes a lot as it dries. Dark parts fade. The light parts get darker. So green rough cut, finish cuts, and then soda bathed in oiled. Interesting. Very nice. Alon. Pretty spoon. There's that low quad. Oh my God, that stuff is so gorgeous. Really, really beautiful. I love the snail crawling up over the finial. That's awesome. <laughs> So cool. Great pictures too. Great job, Oren. Thanks. All right, Ian. What's this? Cherry with a wee bit of spalting in the bowl. Wanted to do some decoration on the handle, but couldn't decide. Really pretty. There's a little bit of chip carving in the back of the handle there. Very cool. Has anybody seen Ian lately? I haven't seen him in ages. He was on yesterday, Friday morning. I was speaking to him at six o'clock our time. Ah, okay. All right. Aaron, your walnut. Nice. Another Jeff Fryett. Oh, neat. Weird crack in the handle. So you had to remove one side. That actually came out kind of cool looking. I like that. I like that shape. Yeah, I like that one too. I thought that was a pretty, uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Really neat. I love the coloring that he did on it <laughs> with the markers. Very cool. It's a neat shape. This was a 20, a Ruac 20. Oops. Oh, no. Crack. All right. That's what he gets for doing the wrong challenge. That's right. And posting it to the wrong hashtag. Yeah. All right. Correct it. Yeah. Marco. So this is nice facets on that handle. Look at that. Really nice. George drowning his 24s. Nice. They're floating away. Very nice, George. Actually, my daughter took these pictures. 
Oh, really? Great. Yeah. Well, great job on the spoons and great job to your daughter on the photos. Wow. Definitely. That's cool looking. Ginkgo. That, that's neat looking grain in that one. Really cool. Another Jeff Fryett. Wow. Nice finial. Brad, very nice. Spalted yellow birch on the right and spalted hornbeam on the left. Wow, that's neat looking. Is he spalting? Yeah. Super spalt. Wow. Interesting how some spalting gets certain patterns and some. Right. Wow, cool picks. Oh, nice. Look at that. The, 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 the spoon finial. Love that. Yeah, English a super cool idea. That's fun. Yeah, really neat. Great job. Suze. Nice. Great job, Suze. Chris. It's pretty wood. Uh, Oni spoon. I don't know who this person is. That's a really pretty spoon. Pretty wood. Very nice. Another one of the spoon finial. An orin. Nice. It's Cole Rosen. Very nice. Moz. You still on Mozzie? <clears throat> Is he still in Woodcraft buying more tools? Probably still in Woodcraft. Yep. Hasn't been be at the bank. Yep. <laughs> Where's the ATM? Nice. There he's robbing the bank. Wow, that came out great, Chris. Uh, really nice. Brett. 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 Oh, it's, what is it? It's Brett, isn't it? Why oh, wasn't it's... he here to show this spoon off to us? That's the guy that last night. Send him a message and admonish him for this. That's a great detail for Ryan. I noticed that at Pat's at Klipnaki is you could smell Ryan before you saw him. He has like a like unique air about him all the time. Something about <laughs> just being able to sense, just being able to sense his presence. <laughs> I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> he likes your pheromones. That's what he's saying. That's probably what it is. There's only one spoon, fairy. <laughs> Very nice. Another I think we lost our spoon fairy somewhere in. Yes. Nice. More in. Beautiful spoons.
Kamal, nice. Super little hedgehog. Colors. Yeah, wasn't that great? I was hoping there was going to be another shot of that. Very nice. I don't remember who said it, but it's right. This, this uh, spoon really does uh, demand uh, decoration. It's a, such a traditional yep. style. So it really, I, in, in my case, I was really considering it, but all the woods were really... Um, colorful and unique. I didn't want to overdo it. Maybe I'll make another one with. I'm surprised to hear people call it a traditional design because it looked really unique and unusual to me when I first got it. It doesn't seem to me to echo normal. It's, it, it's got a, a definitely a Swedish, you know, influence to it, but it's got its own unique, you know, tricks with the facets and the swoop of the handle and, and all of that. that to me, it was that elongated bowl that made it different. Yeah, like, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like that, that, that's sort of the difference between Don's um, and, and Ryan's is Ryan has that elongated bowl, like you say, whereas Don's but, got that uh, classic egg shape. But Ryan's looks almost like someone photoshopped it, like they took a normal bowl and just kind of stretched it stretched a little. It. Yeah. It. In a good way. I don't mean that to sound weird. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a cool hand. Look at that. I love that. Neat handle, neat variation. Love it. Great job, Nancy. Yeah, Nancy's stuff always has that. I don't know if it's just because her name is Spoons by the Sea or because she paints the ocean all the time, but her spoons always evoke water. They're, she's yeah. really great. Yeah. Really nice. That's really neat looking. Beautiful. Very nice. Great job. That looks so cool, that ebonizing on that. Really, really nice. I feel like it almost looks like stone. Right? Yeah, it's really cool. Wow. I feel like it's quite a compliment from George how accurately he stuck to your template. But he doesn't do that a lot. Yeah, that's true. It's a true statement. It is quite uh, complimentary, isn't it? Oh, look at that one. That one's cool. Right? I don't know STH timber design. Yeah, I don't either. That's got some interesting stuff going on. Olive. That's some guy named Chuck. You have, oh, a very, tool porn. you have a very identifiable <laughs> photographic style. I knew it was yours right away. <laughs> yes. Ignore the spoons. Look at the beautiful tools. Ignore the ugly spoon. Look at the beautiful tools. <laughs> Did I go the wrong direction? That looked like a, re a repeat. Chuck. So what did, did Don say last week about your spoons in former times? <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to repeat it. <laughs> how, how your spoons used to be really crappy. Now they're not so crappy. <laughs> and, and in all fairness, I wasn't the one that said it that way. It was dominant. <laughs> <laughs> True. My buddy Dom, Poggy, always looking out for me. <laughs> it was just my interpretation of what you said, Dom. That's, that's right. Something, really in the, something, something in the translation. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, great stuff. So I'm excited. Jeff has uh, reached out. So he'll, I think we're going to be getting a, a template from Jeff 
probably in the October or November time frame, uh, we'll be doing a, a Jeff Fryett template and the show and tell for that. I think we're probably going to shift our time dramatically uh, in order to accommodate uh, his participation from New Zealand. Um, so it'll probably end up being six in the evening Eastern time. But when, when we get there, I'll announce it. Shoes. The polar opposite time zone than the rest of us. Right, exactly. It'll probably be like, yeah, like everything is going to shift. I think, I think it's Europe, night in, in Europe, yeah, Europe and Israel night. are the ones that are going to kind of, I think, take, take the hard hit on this one when, when we get to it. Assuming it happens. Uh, he, he hasn't confirmed yet. Um, that would be afternoon West Coast, so that's awesome. Uh, I know, right? It'll be evening my time, and so it'll, but it'll be late at night for you, George, which will be perfect for you. Israel, I think you'll end up at being like, what, two, three in the morning, something like that. Yeah, one, one o'clock night. Yeah. Anyway, I this is really nice. I think handle that. East Coast can deserve. No, I like that. Deserve. that is really have a party nice. to lead up to it, George. That's right. I'm no, but no, I'm a no, night owl, anyways. Exactly. Great job, Suze. That that's gorgeous wood. That really looks spectacular. There's mine again, overlaid on the template. That's really pretty. I like the way they did did that. So they scorched it and then uh, steel wooled it probably and then rubbed it with oil. That came out really pretty looking. Interesting. This description is funny. <laughs> New design from the Right, I know. <laughs> Poggy, really beautiful, absolutely stunning. Really nice. Great job. Thank you. It's just fun to carve. Lord David. Nice. He really enjoyed this template he kept going on uh, yeah it's it's a it's a great template it really is he's never on here on saturdays because he's observant but yeah I'm sure he yeah it's right. too bad i really wanted to, to hear his excitement he, look at those <laughs> he's really he's really guy. he'll go on about it tonight yeah very nice Oops, authentication error, who's that from? Wow, nice spoon. Does anybody know this person? No, it is a nice spoon. Looks like Oren does. Yeah, um, Amit is one of my uh, spoon club. Uh... Wow, love the finial, that's really cool. He's the one that took took uh, Ryan's spoon for the weekend. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, you're forgiven. Really nice. Great That's job. Avocado wood. I've never even heard of this wood. Oh, the wood is isn't the best part about it. The fruit is spectacular it's really amazing fruit and really really love eating the, love eating the leaves as well wow is this all like where where does this grow here in the u.s anywhere in the south really yeah, but it doesn't have to go that south i know that even in the uk uh, uh laquat can grow originally it's from the the far east it's uh god i'm tempted to go south see if i can find some to plant in my yard 
to have a spoon with 20 years down the road. Wow. It grows, it grows slow, this tree. So you, should, you might have to wait 40 years. Nice spoon. Very nice. Lauren, um, going back, how long, like when it's not spalted, is it solid ground? Does it have a hardwood sapwood split? Is it the spalting that gives it that wild color? Or is it naturally fresh, still pretty colorful? It's very light when it's natural. Um, here's, I don't know if you can see me. And if you I can, on, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm this is the color before anything. It's relatively light. Um, after, after I uh, put hold it on a sec, let me. Uh, I'll stop sharing and I'll spotlight you real quick. Where are you? I'm over Where? here. I'm the one talking. Ah, thanks. <laughs> no, it's the waving. I need the motion to be able to spot you in the grid. <laughs> so this is. Sometimes you can get a little bit of lines, but this is due to spalting. But see the difference in color. This oh. is light. This is after baking soda. Um, here's the same the same wood before here before baking soda after baking soda, and uh, just when it gets spalting, the spalting goes crazy. But in general, you don't see any growth ring. It's completely one solid huh. color. It's it's like wow. Like carving, um, I don't know, a, a potato. It, it's very mm -hmm. smooth. It does what you ask it to. It's it's the giving tree. It's really amazing. Nice. That spalting really is impressive then. Like I wasn't- It really sure. is. But, yeah, yeah it, it's crazy. No, that's, that's not. The different. Huh. Yeah. Um, cool. yeah usually, usually the ones I get are spalted because the only reason people take down the tree is yeah. when it gets some kind of disease. And then usually it's because some kind of fungus attacks it and it gets full. Yeah. Very cool. All right, let me uh, go back, share my screen again. Where was I? Share screen. Uh, nope, this one. This share. That's a great picture, Ryan. So those finials just pop that color, and then that that, that deep green and the the wood tones. That's a great photo. It's like so sad though. I think I edit photos terribly because it always comes out blue, which is all the same purple. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. I actually like the blue. <laughs> really nice. I gotta try that really three facet like version of this. I, I kind of like that look. It's neat. Nice. Where did you get Indian rosewood? Rosewood is really hard to come by, I thought, nowadays. Uh, it's a very common decorative tree here. So it's along uh, different villages and towns. You have them on the sides of the road. Um, usually it's a race for people to, the moment one is is taken down, everybody, all, all the woodworkers around are chasing right. it. So, yeah. but it is very hard wood and you gotta go, you're on the clock from the moment it's chopped down till uh, you can't carve it anymore. It's really fast. Wow. Yeah, cause it's super hard. <sighs> yeah. yeah, yeah, my tools, um, I'm just gonna have to throw them out and buy new ones after <laughs> Wow. There is some serious chip carving, nice. That one was super cool. That's that really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Ugly, some chip carving. Yeah. He's yeah, this guy is really amazing stuff. Wow. 
Do I even follow this person? I got a person. I don't know. He has like way too few followers for how good that guy is. It's crazy. I assume the guy. Okay. No, no, normally, if you see the best, I think. Hmm? Yeah, this guy. You normally you you see some guy on Instagram and he get post like okay spoons, and then half a year later you can see win some getting better. And he just the first time I saw him, yeah. he's just doing amazing stuff, and he's like. I think he's oh, I wasn't him wasn't following him. I'm following him now. Holy crap! What a feed! Yikes! He, he's one of these wonders that uh, started and moved really fast like that. His stuff just improved, and every spoon was a huge jump. It was really impressive to see. We had a Marco from Italy who was logging on for a bit. This isn't him. This is a different. Person. No, this is South America. He's from Brazil. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I thought it was the Italy guy for at first no, too, and no, I saw that coming. Brazil. Really pretty. Oh, not. I thought it was the Italy one too. All right. I'm... Wow. Nope. Well, Really nice. <clears throat> nice. What did spoon. you say, Dom? <laughs> oh, sorry. I forgot I was unmuted. I was tapping in the single, slide the piece in. Nice. That looks great. Love that spalting. Beautiful job, Brad. Sonny, what an array. Look at that. Great picture. <laughs> All of these, really awesome. Nice. Plum is very pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I like just how like the edge of the bowl got that lighter color. Yeah, she, yeah, she really placed that perfectly. Really nice. Nice, John. This guy needs to hire a photographer soon. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I struggle too. Very nice. Beautiful I wood. I have my daughter. <laughs> oh, this guy again. Oh, with his spectacular views. And, oh, just, oh, I'm sick of it already. I always uh, sneak in one picture from the surrounding. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> it's like, beautiful spoon, beautiful spoon. Look where I am. <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, but not sorry yeah but sorry all right Andreas why was this should have made a Ruax Moon Chalice 24 <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> all right nice call Jody Beautiful spoons, Jody. That 
those are spectacular. She really did a great job. Are you still on here, Jody? Really beautiful job. Yeah, I'm still here. Thank you. Absolutely gorgeous. Your carving has come a long way too. You've really progressed a lot and fast. Thank you. It's been a lot of practice, but. Uh, you're doing great. Being more fun. Thanks. It's, it's only taken me, what, eight years, 10 years to get to this point? And I still can't get there. Rachel, nice. I saw Rachel was on earlier, but she never spoke up. Oh, I cracked. Bummer. You guys over there in Israel with all your beautiful spalted wood. Mm -hmm. That's so pretty. God. My wood, he just takes it from my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start getting some locks on those freezers. <laughs> yeah, you better shoot. Keep the bodies from escaping. Nice. Nice rack. I love, love that with the finials. <laughs> that was so funny. That's really cool. That's a great idea. That is a brilliant idea. <laughs> Although God forbid you accidentally like try to like, like if you twist it slightly to one side or the other, you snap the finial. Anyway, very cool. Oh, this guy again. My phone is about to die. Yeah, I'm actually, it's, we've been going for two hours, 15 now. I'm going to have to bring this to an end. I think that was the last one anyway. Oh, great job, Harry. Nice. Thank you. It's, nice uh, shot. You know, the more I'm, I'm carving this wood and I'm, uh, I'm starting to wonder whether it's whether it's beach or hornbeam because it is just it's it's a lovely to carve in, from the perspective of you know it gets a nice finish even just with the knife and it's it sands up really nice uh, but it's just so it's so hard it's I'm 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 not sure if there's any other way to distinguish beach from hornbeam uh, when it's when it's sort of dried and not on the tree. Mm. But, uh, if anyone has any tips on that, then uh, then it would be much appreciated because I don't know, I'm not quite sure which it is at this stage. Well, it's really pretty, whatever it is. It's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it is lovely wood. All right. Well, great job, everybody. I'm gonna have to draw this one to a close. I am here to spend some time with my parents. So, uh, thank you, everyone. Super well done. So. Just uh, as a reminder, our next show and tell is going to be uh, 9 a.m. Eastern on September 11th for Ruax Spoon Challenge number 25, which is a pie server, um, which is by our, the wonderful carver, Emily Rigsby. If you don't follow her, go search her out on Instagram. She does these amazing feather spoons um, that are like painted, like especially like these beautiful like blue jay feathers and and all different kinds of feathers on the hit for a handle. Um, she does some really beautiful work. So go check her out if you don't follow her. And she's, also, really she's also incredibly expert in like everything Sloyd and related to woodworking and related to nature. I'm trying to find her Instagram name to share because it's a little different than you'd expect. E-M-I-L-I-E-S-R-I-G-B-Y, Emily's Rigby. Mm. So anyway, yeah, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Super well done. Really impressive. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you see you out there on uh, Rise Up and Carve. Hopefully, don't forget, please. You know, Rise Up and Carve is twenty four seven. It's the the room is always there. It's always available. You can always log in at any time. You may or may not find people to carve with uh, at any given moment, but if you stick around for a while. Uh, if there was nobody there when you first log in, usually you'll end up having somebody join you, you know, within a while. Um, we do have four regular times. Go check out riseupandcarve.com for all the details. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody. And we'll see you next time.
I'm going to stop the recording. Talk. Thank Thanks you very much. much. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Take Good care. Talk.